Hello. Oh, no, no, he doesn't have my mobile number. Oh. You dropped out of my life when I was, I was 12. Did you just lose interest? No, it was slightly more complicated than that. How complicated can it be to keep in touch with the only family you have? Now, you're not married and, and you don't have any kids, so, so are you gay or something? Because I don't... Her name is Coco Jones. Well, it's really Linda, but she thinks it's too suburban, so she calls herself Coco. And she told you she was having lunch on a friend's boat. Do you know the friend's name? Mm, Cully Bridges. It's her family's boat. Cully likes people to think it's hers, but she's a big no to you know what I mean? And you haven't seen either of them since, what, lunchtime yesterday? Mm. Coco was supposed to turn up for work at 8 last night. She never showed. I tried calling her and Cully, no answer. Cully's folks don't know where she is either. Is it usual for your fiancé not to show up for work, Mr Mason? She always has before. The nightclub's her life. Oh, yeah? What nightclub's that? Close Encounters. I own it. Coco helps out in the bar. Keep an eye out for two possible missing persons. Coco Jones and Carly Bridges. They went after the boat called Archimedes yesterday midday and haven't returned. The fiancé said their favourite spot is around Bantry Bay. Do you copy? Copy that. Party. Yeah. Well, I rode down the engine seem okay. Pretty deserted area, national parks all around. Coco Jones's handbag. Wonder if the other woman took hers with her. Or well, someone else did. Or maybe it's with them at the bottom of the bay. Get down. Um, Can't seem to look over. Police launch. We'll mark the spot with the boy. Sydney Water Police. Police launch nemesis standing by. Proceed to Birkenhead Point. There's a report of two teenage boys in a tin outboard. They're attempting to steal handbags from restaurant patrons. Check it out, please. Copy that.
Ladies and gentlemen, attention. Please welcome the latest member of the Blue Swimmers Club. I hope this doesn't end up a hurt on duty claim. The only thing that was hurt, Sergeant, was my pride. It's not particularly funny, Johnson. Two suspects got away because of you. Yeah, well, it's not exactly Johnson's fault, boss. Uh, it's the nature of the beast. Most of us are members of the Blue Swimmers Club, even the best of us. She hasn't proved she's one of the best of us yet, Tommy. What is it with you two? Simple matter of hate at first sight. You can handle it. Hi. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah. Um, I'm worried about a friend of mine. She borrowed my boat yesterday and she hasn't returned it. I would have reported it sooner, but I was in Tamworth until this morning. And your name is? Uh, Carly Bridges. And your friend's name? Coco Jones. Linda Coco Jones. Yeah. Nothing's happened to her, has it? Her fiancé, Mr Mason, has already reported her missing. In fact, he said that she was with you. Well, Coco wanted to borrow the boat because she wanted to entertain someone. Someone? Well, she didn't tell me who it was, but she insisted that we tell Ellery that she was with me, so I figured that she was meeting another man. Um, you are looking for her, aren't you? Quite a few usable fingerprints. The interesting thing is one set of cutlery and one glass has been wiped clean. This is the glass with the fingerprints on it. Oh, still got sediment in the bottom. Yeah, not from the bubbly either. We'll wait on toxicology, but it looks like he's been drugged. Get that back ASAP with you, Stuart. Good on your face. Okay, so now why would someone want to drug her drink? Why? Well, um, take advantage of her, rob her. She comes to, they struggle and he kills her. Then why not leave the body there? Maybe he did. Divers haven't found one. Well, maybe the tide moved it. If you think I'm not proud to be in the water police, you're wrong. I've wanted to get in ever since I became a copper. I make the occasional mistake, but so does everyone. But I'm trying my best, and I think I'm doing a pretty good job. Well, that's a matter of opinion. I'm only asking for a fair go, not any preferential treatment. There's no such thing as a fair go in this line of work. You either do your job well, or you find something else. Please. I am doing my job well. Look, look, if you're worried, I'm going to tell someone. I mean, I don't want anybody knowing about a relationship any more than you do. Marlene O'Brien. Who? Oh, I've got a lot of her records. She hasn't brought anything out for years. Blues? Got to be. What do you know about the blues? I used to play them. Did you read my mind? Wait a bit. Just like a child could do it. Did you read the song? Like you're at a funeral, you jazz it up a bit. It might make up for some of those bum notes you keep hitting. The song's not meant to be jazzed up, Ellery. It is if I say it is. Who the hell are you? Uh, Detective Goldstein is my partner, Detective Holloway. Hey, I didn't hear any bum notes. You're a music critic too, eh? Yeah, apparently more than you. Uh, Mr. Mason, do you recognise this? I gave it to Coco last birthday. First gift I gave her. Where'd you find it? What's happened to her? Oh, we found the boat. She wasn't on board. And she wasn't with Carly Bridges either, Mr. Mason. 
Apparently she was meeting, um, well, someone else. Someone else who? Some man. That's why she told you she was having lunch with Miss Bridges. She wouldn't dare. Why wouldn't she dare? I mean, she's not the type to cheat. Look, Mr. Mason, your fiance, she's missing. Now, if you can think of anyone she might have been meeting or anyone who's um, taken an interest in her. There was a man about three months ago. She told me he was stalking her. Then a flat got broken into. She reported it to you all lot, but they did nothing about it. This guy she was going to meet, you know who he is? I never saw him. After the break-in, he stopped following her anyway. We just assumed it was some weirdo. So she's hardly likely to have met him, is she? You ever been on Carly's boat? Yeah, once or twice a while ago now. If you got a moment, could you come down the station? Take your fingerprints. We just want to eliminate those who've been on the boat so we can concentrate on the prints that shouldn't be there. Yeah, sure. Now, Mr. Mason, when your fiance went missing, whereabouts were you? I was here. Doing what I'm always doing, running a nightclub. Choosing songs with Marlene. Okay, okay. So, let's say Mason found out that Coco was having an affair. Finds out where she's going to rendezvous with this bloke. He follows them, bumps them off, sticks their bodies in the boat and dumps them offshore. What about the dope glass? I don't know. Here we are. Linda Coco Jones reported a break and enter at her flat on the 4th of the 1st, 97. Reported stolen were two sets of lacy underwear and various photographs of Coco. I love you was written in red lipstick on the bedroom mirror. No fingerprints were collected from the flat, so obviously we can't compare them with the unidentified ones found on the boat. Any report of a stalker? Coco claims someone was following her home from work. Yes, around about the same time her flat was broken into. The description's pretty general, though. Shortish, dark hair. Mid-30s. Mm. She's not going to have a date with a stalker. Yeah, but using your theory, right? Um, follows Coco, sees her with this mystery man, gets jealous. Stalk a stalk, fiancés get jealous. Oh, he's just got up your nose because he criticised that, well, that singer of yours. So he's got an ego and a temper, that bloke. Thanks, Alan. I said half the guys I know. Should change the circles you mix in. Well, you're a senior. What she said to you? Nothing. Come on, they were coming out of the locker room talking about their relationship. She had her buttons undone down to here. Dave, Johnson's not that way inclined. Um, you sure you won't, like, be keeping these on record? Once we've eliminated them from the ones on the boat, they'll be destroyed. When I seen you going into that place, you turned to look at me and you smiled. And blah, 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 blah. I'm in love with you and I'm desperate, Dave. Coco gave them to me one night when she came over. I made a funny dinner party story. Do you really think they could be written by the same guy that's stalking her? And they stopped when her flat was broken into? Mm -hmm. About three months ago. Probably got enough kicks swiping her undies. Oh, creepy. Dear Coco, I'm getting very upset because I don't think you've told your boyfriend about us. You said hello to me last night, so I know you feel the same as me. So when are we going to be alone and get... What? Hey? She said hello to him? Well, we figured he used to come into Close Encounters. Oh, Coco worked there. But she was nice to everyone. This one's got a post box, has a return address. Do you mean you could find Dave through, through a box number? The post office would probably have his name and address here. Look, I don't want to tell you people your business or anything, but well, I really think we ought to be going to the papers. I mean, if Coco has been abducted by some nutter, then the longer we leave it, the more danger she'll be in. And maybe if we appeal to him, he'll let it go. <laughs> Linda Jones was last seen attending a meeting on board the boat Archimedes at approximately 1pm about two days ago. The boat later turned up empty at uh, Bantry Bay. Now, Linda was last seen wearing uh, white jeans, a pink floral top and beige sandals. We're hoping for assistance from anyone who might have seen Linda or has any um, knowledge or information about her whereabouts that will help us with our investigation. Were there any signs of a struggle on the boat, Detective? Yeah, there were. Do you know if Linda was meeting anyone on the boat? 
Uh, not at the moment, uh, but we are looking for a man who we believe can help us in our investigation. He's of below average height, dark hair, probably be uh, between his mid to late 30s, and we believe that he goes under the name of Dave. This man obviously has got some deep feeling for Linda, so we appeal to him to come forward as well. How worried are you about her safety, Mr Mason? Very. I haven't been able to sleep since she went missing. Uh, I just want her back. Please. I own Close Encounters nightclub. If anyone knows this man or knows where Coco is, please, please let me know. I'll do anything. Does that mean you'll be offering a reward? We're appealing to the public at this stage. If anyone knows anything about Ms Jones' disappearance, they could be eligible for a reward and should call Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000 or contact the Sydney Water Police Detectives Direct. All information is anonymous and will remain confidential. Great. They're going to be flooded. If Miss Jones was the victim of a stalker, why wasn't something done about it then? Uh, well, despite all efforts, uh, through the investigation at the time, we were unable to identify the alleged stalker. Oh. And uh, <clears throat> Ms Jones, she made no further uh, reports. But now she's been abducted. We can't nice one, Frankie. You should run for the commissioner's job. Just That's like that. <laughs> Please. You've really hurt his feelings. What's wrong with my clothes? Nothing. That tie's been my favourite for years. Good news, bad news, what'll it be? I'll take the good. Post office says the box was rented to a David Fremont. Was. That means the bad news is that he's not renting anymore and he's probably moved. Very good. Whereabouts unknown, sorry. TV didn't do his club any harm. I'm going to ask a few questions, see if anyone remembers our desperate day. Ah. You too. Something long and cool, thanks, Jimmy. Listen, that was just great. Honest, thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> so tell me, um, you knew Coco? Sure. Sweet kid. She used to harmonise with me during rehearsals. It's a bugger of a thing to have happened. Yeah. Did you ever see a short, dark, sort of chubby bloke hanging around her? No? Yeah. Does the name Dave Fremont mean anything to you? Sorry, but then I don't tend to mix with the customers. I sing, I go home. <laughs> so, um, what's it like working for Ellery? It's a job. Get on all right? Leaves me alone most of the time. He wouldn't know blues from jazz from country. What? He doesn't, uh... Doesn't choose your songs with you. <laughs> if he did that, I'd rather wash dishes. So yesterday, he wasn't with you going over your repertoire? No. Someone who thinks Billy Holiday was a bloke isn't going to have much of a conversation about repertoire. <laughs> oh, no. Well, if you weren't with Marlene when your fiancé went missing, where were you? I was here, working. Then why'd you lie to us? It wasn't a lie. Not exactly. I was in the nightclub. You know, I've heard that you couldn't tell the difference between a, a chord and an octave, so you weren't helping the musicians. I must have got the days mixed up, that's all. Your fiancé went missing and you got the days mixed up. Look, I admit it freaked me out when you started asking me where I was. I mean, I know the way these things work. A girl goes missing, the first thing you police do is start suspecting the boyfriend, right? Am I right? I just didn't want you wasting time checking me out, so so I lied, but I was in the nightclub. Yeah, but you did waste our time. But tell me, um, do you get along with Carly Bridges? No. What has that got to do with anything? Well, say you arranged to have lunch with Coco on the boat, but Coco didn't tell Miss Bridges because she knew her friend wouldn't want you on the boat, so she made up a story about meeting another man. I'm telling you, it was the other way around. Coco said Carly invited her to have lunch. 
I didn't even know there was another man. Yeah, but you were the first one to mention the stalker. Now, he might have come in very handy if, uh, for instance, you wanted something to happen to your fiancé and you needed someone to blame. Jeez, I don't need this. If you've got any proof, arrest me. But I'm not saying another word to you lot without having a solicitor around. Just find the guy who was stalking her. I want her back. Alive. Sound genuine? We have to find Desperate Day first. Coco Jones? Yeah, could you give me your address, please? So what was that, madam? Yes, yes, it's all strictly confidential. If you could just give us an address, then we can check it out. Yes, thank you very much for your call, ma'am. We'll get somebody around here as soon as possible. I'll keep you long to be here. Taylor Johnson. The three-month probation period is just about up, and I need to confirm a physician. You've been supervising her. Any reason why she shouldn't stay with us? No, sir. She performs her duties well. Mm. Bits in all right, does she? Yes, sir. Well, certainly the lower ranks, sir. Surely there's no problem with the senior officers. Well, that's not for me to say, sir. Water police. Speaking. Yes, ma'am. Down by the docks. Don't get up, Sergeant. Just doing the final report on young Johnson. Seems to be fitting in rather well, don't you think? I don't know whether she's proved herself yet, Jeff. She's very immature. This wouldn't happen to be a personality clash, would it, Helen? <laughs> you asked for my opinion, I've given it. Well, we all have them from time to time. Even you and I. But I'd like to think that doesn't stop a good working relationship. That's a possibility. I uh, reported seeing Coco and a man getting onto a boat at Bateman's Marina. Recognised Coco from a photo on the TV, but can't give a clear description of a man. Well, so far she's been seen at, what, a hotel in the Blue Mountains, a motel in King's Cross, and a ski lodge just outside Jindabyne. Oh, this is a good one, all the way from Parramatta. So she saw her next-door neighbour going into his place with a blonde. Looks like Coco, uh, but she's always suspected him of being a murderer. <laughs> right. Well, they'll all have to be checked out. Anything on this Dave Fremont character? Yeah, yeah, I've checked him out on cops. Now, he's got no form, doesn't even have a driver's license. Somebody just rang Crime Stoppers. Looks like we've got a lead on Dave Fremont. The caller was at the RSL when the appeal went out over the television. This guy next to him started bragging about how he knew Coco Jones, how they were lovers. The caller said he didn't believe him. And that's when this bloke said, I've got some of her underwear to prove that we're an item. Did he describe this bloke? Yeah, short, dark hair, mid-thirties. Hello, yes. Fantastic. Thanks for your help. OK, the Cronulla RSL have a Dave Fremont as a member and they've given us an address. Thank you. Nice isolated spot to keep a hostage. Yeah. Could have been how he got her off the boat. on your head, please. This is a warrant to search your premises. What's this about? Just hoping you might be able to help us with our investigation into the disappearance of Linda Jones. She likes to be called Coco, and I'm not letting her go, ever. OK, Mr Fremont, Dave. Can I call you Dave or David? David's OK. That's what Coco calls me. So the underpants we found in your boat shed, whose are they? Coco's. Where'd you get them? Her flat. When? About three months ago. Did you take anything else? Some photos. Mm -hmm. And did you do anything else while you are at the flat? I left a note on the mirror in her bedroom. Oh, yeah? What'd it say? I love you. I used one of her lipsticks, the red. She used to wear it to Close Encounters. And where's Miss Jones now? That's between me and her. Listen, Dave. We're gonna find her eventually. 
So why don't you make it a little bit easier on yourself and tell us where you're hiding her? Maybe she doesn't want to be found. Well, her fiancé is very upset and so are her friends. Maybe they've got a right to know where she is, that she's safe. I'm the only one that really cares about her. She just wants to be with me. Well, if you care about her so much, why'd you break into a flat, steal her things? That was before. Before what? Before she knew how much I loved her. Where'd you meet? On the boat. So you expect us to believe that she met you on the boat? You sure didn't follow her and the guy she was actually going to meet? There was no one else, just me and her. Well, how'd you arrange the meeting? I saw her one night at Close Encounters. We made a date then. Then what'd you eat the lunch, mate? Something nice, I can't remember. We only had eyes for each other. Well, and you had some drinks too, eh? Some nice wine? Yeah, probably uh, champagne. Crozer. She always drinks that. She wanted something special for me, she said. So if she met you of her own free will, why'd you have to spike her drink? Excuse me, Detective. Do you think um, me and Dave could have a word together? Like uh, a bit of boys talk? Please. You know, it's funny, but um, some people, you know, they just can't understand why, like, tall, gorgeous, blonde Sheilas could get attracted to blokes like us. But you and I, Dave, we know better. So tell me. Now, I reckon Coco, she gets all caught up in the excitement of running away with you, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, but then halfway through lunch, she gets cold feet. Yeah, I mean, no. She just wanted to be with me. <laughs> so why'd you spike a drink? Oh, just for the hell of it, you know? All right. So she comes to and she starts to fight you off. No way. She loves me. We'd never fight. Mate, the place was trashed. Must have happened after we left. <sighs> yeah, all right, all right. Right, I'll buy that. All right, so you've got her in your little runabout and uh, you're thinking, maybe I'll take her to the boat shed, but the boat shed's not nice enough. So you think, OK, I'll take her somewhere else. Um, maybe, like, uh, somewhere nice, a cabin in the mountains. Yeah, maybe. Then again, maybe not. Enjoying this. Well, he did the B&E, that's for sure, but, I mean, he's not telling us anything about the disappearance that he couldn't have read in the paper. Let's give him a little test, then. So, Dave, boat was moored about here. All well, looks pretty much the same to me, but over there. And you used the dinghy to leave. Yeah. Well, where'd you land? Over there. Okay. So tell me, Dave, how come you only got halfway through the lunch? Or too busy doing other things, know what I mean? Yeah, like putting Finergan in her drink. Yeah, well, she was getting seasick. I thought Finergan did help. The lab reckons it's definitely Dizepan, so either he doesn't know his drugs or it wasn't him that put it in the glass. Crime scene found no evidence to say I was keeping her in the boat shed. No evidence of anyone outside Fremont having been in the boat shed in the past two weeks. Well, maybe she's somewhere else, or maybe she's just murdered and dumped as we first suspected. What do we do about desperate Dave? Well, if he wants to make admissions, charge him with break, enter and steal. We'll keep it in the media. Maybe we'll get lucky. You want to see me, sir? Yes. You've been with us for three months now, Johnson. I take it you want to remain in the water, please? Yes, sir. No complaints? No. No, sir. Well, if you have, now would be the time to voice them. No complaints whatsoever, sir. I'm very happy here. Right. Well, in that case, I don't see any reason why I can't make your position permanent. Good work, Johnson. Thank you, sir. That's all. Well, we only know the police have questioned someone, but that's all oh. they're telling us at the moment. We still well, appeal to anyone who knows where Coco is. Please come forward. Mm, anything, anything yeah, at all that could help find her. 
If she can hear you now, is there anything you'd like to say to your fiance? Frank, it, just that I love her. I need to sit tight because right. I'm not about to give up. Thanks for your time, Mr. Mason. Thank you. That was Ellery. Coco Jones, she's been found. She was picked up near the St. George Caravan Park with her hands still tied behind her back. She got a bit hysterical, apparently, giving her a few sedatives. Won't be able to talk to her till tomorrow. The whole thing feels like a nightmare. I didn't think I was ever going to get out of there. I thought he was going to kill me. Can you describe the man who abducted you? Tallish. He had a lot of brown, wavy hair. Sort of good-looking. And, uh, and he was pretty strong. He said his name was Jack Holly, but that had to have been made up. You know, just to get me to meet him. Look, I'm sorry, but why did you agree to meet some guy you don't know on a boat? I oh, know. This is going to sound ludicrous, but... I was speaking to this fellow in the nightclub about a week ago, and I happened to mention I wanted to be a singer. And he said he might be able to help me. You know, he said he was an agent, knew people in the recording industry and stuff. So I said I'd meet him for lunch, and he, he wanted to go someplace quiet to talk business. So I thought of the boat. So stupid. Why the big secret? I mean, why not just tell your fiance? Because I wanted it to be a surprise. I, and I didn't want to make a fool out of myself in case he hated my singing. OK, so you met him on the boat. Then what happened? He must have drugged my drink or something. I woke up in this caravan somewhere. He tied me to the bed and blindfolded me. Did he assault you? No, thank God. But he kept coming in real close, blowing in my ear, waving some material over my face, clicking his fingers. So I'd know he was still there. So how'd you escape? Uh, he went out and I, um, I managed to get the blindfold off and I untied the rope to the bed with my teeth and I climbed out a window. But you had your hands tied behind your back the whole time? Yeah. It took me forever. I was terrified he'd come back and find me. That, that's how I got this. Look, um, I'm really tired, you know? Just, can I go now? I just want to go home. Of course. Yeah, of course. Pushing it! Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a hard, long ordeal. We just want to get home. Cut us tired. What's the chances of her having two desperate days in her life, I ask you? Mm, I ask you. It's not as if the two guys needed the money or anything, because they were both from well-to-do families. Nah, I reckon they were just in it for kicks. Johnson! Now, if you don't want the police prosecutor throwing your statement back at you, then can you learn how to write down the correct dates and times, redo it, and maybe if you stop flirting with the male members of the station for two minutes, you might help get a conviction, just a thought. Hey, Tommy. She's on her back again. This time she's accused Taylor of flirting with all of us. Bit of the green-eyed monster, wouldn't you think? Oh, come on, man. You know Blakemore as well as I do. I find it hard to believe that she'd be involved with a junior officer. Well, I know what I saw. It just seems to be more to those two than meets the eye. Working in close proximity, often under difficult conditions, then certain feelings uh, <clears throat> can come to the surface. Now, I've never been one to tell my officers how to conduct their lives in private, but when certain behaviour creeps into the workplace and uh, distracts officers from their work, then well, it's, it's, it's my duty to step in. Certain behaviour, sir? Yes, well, it's a question of overhearing gossip, really. About the both of you. Now, I'm hoping that there's been some sort of a misunderstanding. However, if 
what I have heard is true, then we have a problem. All right. Gossip about what? You two have a sexual relationship. What? Um, Sergeant Blakemore is my aunt, sir. I don't believe this. I should have been informed, Sergeant. Well, we're informing you now, sir. How could you think that... Oh, no. It's funny, really. <clears throat> yes, sir. I hired it out six weeks ago to a woman who said she was a writer. One of the quietest area of the park. She paid cash and that was the last I saw of her. Any comings and goings the last couple of days? No, not a soul. The woman you hired it to, you remember her name? Something like Molly, I think. Molly? Holly, that's it, Holly. Right, what's she look like? Oh, can't say I remember. Young, pretty, sorry. Thanks. Yep. What is... Hey. Oh, credit cards, lots of cash. Mr. Holly certainly wasn't in it for the money. All the comforts at home. Hey, television. Oh, yeah. Shall we? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was the most terrifying thing that's ever happened to me in my whole life. So you really believed that the kidnapper was going to kill you? Oh, I was convinced of it. I think the only reason that he kept me alive for as long as he did was, was because I talked to him. The, uh, People the wonder why they're cynical. Agree. It's a very brave thing to do. What, what sort of things did you talk to him about? Um, uh, my fiance, my friends, my life, anything that would have made him see me as a human being and, and not just something he could do away with. And in your life, I believe you want to be a singer. Oh, you should hear her. She's got a fabulous voice. <laughs> Well, maybe we will. We've got a bit of time. At the uh, end of the show, maybe you'd like to give us a performance? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I suppose. I, I'll have a go. Actually, I, I wrote a song um, just before this whole thing happened. I, I could sing that. Sounds familiar to you? I've got music for it in my bag. Um, we could do it. Bizarre as it sounds, there's still the possibility she's telling the truth. I want you to treat her as a victim. She staged this herself, Jeff. Be that as it may, I want you to go easy with her until you get some evidence. You've got half the population thinking she's a heroine. This might interest you all. Among the other fingerprints found in the caravan were those belonging to Carly Bridges. Carly, can you explain to me why your prints were found in the caravan? Well, <laughs> can you tell me the name of the man you were working with? Was it Ellery Mason? I don't know what you're talking about. Listen, we can place you inside the caravan. Now, who was the guy you were working with? There wasn't any man. So you and Coco set this up together? Coco wants to be a singer, and I said I'd be her manager. Only no one was even interested in her. Not even her own fiancé, the prick. So whose idea was Desperate Dave? Sort of both of us. See. We were laughing about his letters and Coco said that it reminded her of Fairly Arrow. You know, the one that said that she was abducted by an obsessed fan. Well, idea kind of came out of that. Only thing we didn't count on was you finding Desperate Dave. <laughs> well, they'll be charged with. Public mischief. What will we get for that? Hopefully a jail term. Probably a fine and community service, though. She's been offered a lot of money for a story. Not to mention the recording contract. <sighs> Guess she got what she wanted. But you'll do it without me. She's got no idea what she put me through, you know. It almost killed me, and she's got no idea. Cheers. So, yeah. Not a bad fella. Oh, you're such a hypocrite. But I'll still let you shout me a drink. How come you're free tonight? It's your lucky day, mate. I'm busy myself tonight. <laughs> 